Okay. Um, thank you very much, Reshef. Um, so uh, there is, uh, there are some pros and cons for being uh, <clears throat> the last lecturer. Uh, the cons are that the number of participants has gone down because of materials fatigue, I guess. But the pros is that some of the uh, previous lecturers have already introduced some of the topics that I'm going to talk about, so it will be easier for me to discuss them. So I'm going to talk about plasmonic cavities and their coupling with individual uh, quantum emitters. Uh, for several years now, we've been interested in looking at what we like to call <coughs> plasmonic molecules, which are really antennas, combinations of plasmonic particles that come together and have interesting responses because they have some uh, interesting local modes of uh, excitation that can then emit to the uh, far field or can then have interesting uh, responses in the near field. And that's what we are going to discuss now. And in particular, we are going to focus in this talk on bow tie antennas, uh, which were uh, mentioned before uh, uh, in an earlier talk. Uh, we are going to uh, think about some of the simplest uh, um, modes of these uh, bow tie antennas. So here's a same image of uh, such an antenna. And uh, the lowest energy mode of such an antenna is a combination of two dipoles, uh, one dipole in each of the particles, and then combined together uh, in this manner, forming uh, this arrangement of charges inside the, uh, the particles. Uh, so we call this a bright mode because the two dipoles combine together and they can then emit to the far field. But there is also a dark mode in which the two dipoles uh, face uh, head to head like this. Uh, and then uh, because of that, the two dipoles uh, cancel each other and there is no emission to the uh, far field. Nevertheless, these two modes uh, share one uh, property together, which is that there is a strong electromagnetic field in the gap between the two nanoparticles. So the particles basically confine the external field uh, uh, into the gap. And so this is a calculation of the field in the gap, in this case for the bright mode, and you can see the strong uh, enhancement of the field, especially near the particles, but also in the center here. So what we would like to do is to be able to put some particles or molecules into the gap between uh, uh, the two parts of the bow tie and see what happens then, how we can uh, look at the interaction between the quantum emitter uh, and the bow tie. And this is work that was done in the lab over the years by several people. It was started by a postdoc, uh, Santos Kotny, who uh, has already left quite some time ago. Uh, Satyendra Gupta continues the work in the lab and we are collaborating with Dr. Ora Viton, who is the head of our nanofabrication uh, unit, and also with Dr. Lev Chuntono from the Technion, who was a postdoc in the group many years ago and is now a colleague and a good friend. So uh, what can we do with a cavity, uh, as we call uh, our bow tie, and quantum emitters inside it? So this is a problem that is within the realm of cavity quantum electrodynamics. And in this field of research, uh, people classically used dielectric cavities and they put single emitters inside the cavities and they looked at the coupling between the uh, 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 electromagnetic field inside the cavity and the single emitter. And if the coupling is strong enough, what happens is that uh, the cavity mode couples to the excited state of the emitter and there are two new uh, polaritonic states, lower polariton and upper polariton separated by twice the coupling strengths. And this, of course, leads in the spectrum to a, the formation of two peaks. Uh, and this is called vacuum Rabi splitting. And this is a well-known phenomenon, um, uh, which was observed many years ago already in uh, many different contexts. And I'll just show you one classical example from 2004, uh, where a uh, photonic crystal uh, uh, with a, uh, a defect here was used as a cavity and a uh, 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 semiconductor quantum dot was fabricated inside and you can see the uh, uh, splitting in the spectrum due to the coupling between the emitter and the cavity but 
Uh, this had to be done at very low temperature in order for the coupling to be strong enough uh, to uh, have an effect. And you can see here that the uh, line width uh, of the spectrum is very narrow. So this has to be done also with uh, specialized uh, narrow line width lasers. So we wondered whether we can use our plasmonic bow tie cavities in order to do the same thing at room temperature and under much more permissive conditions. Uh, the idea about using plasmonic bow ties as cavities is uh, perhaps a bit surprising initially because uh, the quality factor of such cavities is not very good in the sense that they have a very broad line widths, which indicates that there are many losses in these cavities. In other words, if you think about a good cavity, a photon will bounce between the two parts of the cavity, the two mirrors, many times before escaping. That's not the case in a plasmonic bow tie because of the loss, loss in nature of the particles that form it. On the other hand, the volume of such a cavity is much, much smaller than the volume of a dielectric cavity like I showed you before with two mirrors. And that's where we gain actually because the uh, uh, small volume can lead to a strong confinement of the field here and to a strong enough interaction with the emitter inside in order to lead to strong coupling. So here are several examples of such bow ties that we form in the lab with quantum emitters inside. So the quantum emitters that we use are colloidal quantum dots, uh, like the ones that were mentioned in the uh, talk of Dan Oron. Um, and we uh, developed a process by which we introduced uh, one to several quantum dots inside the cavity. And uh, although we do not have absolute control on the number of quantum dots, we can then uh, look, after we do our spectroscopy experiment, we can look uh, at the bow ties and we can actually count them using uh, scanning electron microscopy like you see here. Here's an example with a single quantum dot, two quantum dots, and five in this case. So that's uh, an, a big advantage of this kind of experiment because if we put molecules inside, of course, we cannot see them, we cannot count them, at least not readily. So if we look uh, with uh, uh, scattered light. We use dark field uh, microspectroscopy and scatter um, um, broadband light from individual bow ties with uh, 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 quantum dots inside. And we can see that indeed we get split spectra. We get vacuum Rabi splitting in the spectrum, an indication that we are uh, at or close to the uh, strong coupling uh, regime. And you can see that in, in the upper case, we have two particles. And in the lower case, we have three particles. And in both cases, we see a significant splitting in the spectrum. What happens if we have a single particle? Uh, well, the, uh, obviously, the uh, coupling is not as strong as for uh, two and three particles. In fact, the coupling goes with the square root of the number of particles. But still, we can see a splitting in the spectrum in some cases. Or in some cases, like this one, we just see a broadening of the spectrum compared to the empty cavity, which indicates that something happens there. So uh, there is a very good indication in our experiments that indeed we are reaching the strong coupling regime and we can see vacuum rubby splitting with individual or a small number of quantum emitters in the cavity. How can we prove this further? Well, we can use polarized light. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the mode uh, that I described before that couples to the uh, particles is the mode along the bow ties, while the perpendicular mode should not couple to the quantum emitters as strongly. So we can start with this uh, polarization along this direction and then um, um, gradually change the polarization direction until uh, we get to the 90 uh, degrees condition. And you can see that the dip in the spectrum gradually goes away. And what is left is only the uh, resonance of the particles in the perpendicular direction. So this is an indication that indeed uh, the dip in the spectrum that we see is due to the coupling between the quantum emitters and the cavity. So what we see here is that plasmonic bow ties provide enough, uh, 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 enough enhancement of the electromagnetic field in order to generate a very strong coupling between uh, quantum emitters inside the gap and the, uh, this field. And this uh, uh, strong coupling leads to the formation of vacuum Rabi splitting in the spectrum, which we can detect. 
This can be done with one or a few particles, and uh, uh, this allows us to actually uh, proceed further and to look at more interesting phenomena related to this kind of quantum optical phenomenon. So one interesting question that we had was whether we can see this same phenomenon with additional observ observations. So we looked at scattered light, but obviously the quantum uh, uh, dots that we put inside the cavity also emit light. So the question was whether uh, photoluminescence from the quantum dots can also show split spectra. And in fact, two groups uh, preceded us by showing this. One was the group of Bert Hecht and the other one, Matthew Felton. Uh, and they both showed, uh, dem demonstrated split spectra uh, due to uh, the insertion of quantum dots into various types of uh, cavities. Uh, and in fact, our observations are a little bit more complicated than what you see here. So I'm not going to describe them in detail. But in fact, we I'm going to show you that we could also use the photoluminescence from these particles uh, for another purpose, uh, uh, which is also quite interesting. And to do that, we use the non-classical nature of the emission from the uh, particles. Uh, and this was discussed uh, thoroughly by Dan Oron in his talk. So a quantum emitter cannot emit two photons. Uh, it uh, shows anti-bunching because of that. And this can be measured by the famous Hungary Brown and Twist. Uh, experiment where you have two detectors and you look at the correlation between the arrival times of uh, consecutive photons at the detectors. And that's what you expect to see. You saw that already in the uh, Oron lecture. And so this is a single quantum uh, dot, a single quantum emitter. And the, uh, the dip here is the anti-bunching. It goes almost all the way to zero. Uh, and the fact that it's below uh, 0.5 indicates that there is a single quantum dot here. Why? Because this is the relation between the peak or the dip at zero and the number of particles. For, so for one particle, we expect to have close to zero, two particles, uh, 0.5, three particles, two thirds, and so on. So obviously, this is a way, another way to uh, count the number of quantum dots that we have within bowtie uh, cavities. And so that's what we do. And here's another example where we have three quantum dots. So you see that the dip is much uh, smaller and it's, it's about two thirds here indicating that indeed we have uh, three particles inside. And in fact, uh, we compare uh, the direct observations using SEM to this measurement. And we find that with a small number of particles, perhaps up to four particles, the um, agreement between uh, G2 measurements and direct uh, counting uh, in the EM uh, images is excellent. Okay, so uh, uh, in the beginning, I mentioned actually two modes of the, uh, uh, of the bow ties. Uh, the first one was the bright mode and all, everything that we described so far involved that bright mode. But on the other end, there was also the dark mode uh, that I show you again here. So we know already from theater that if you have a gun that appears in the first act, it's going to uh, fire in the uh, last act. So this is the last act of my talk. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this dark mode and show you how we can also see coupling between uh, the dark mode and quantum emitters within the gap. So in order to do that, we, we teamed with uh, Lothar Huben uh, who gave a nice talk in the morning about uh, electron microscopy techniques. And one of these techniques that Lothar mentioned uh, was uh, uh, electron energy loss uh, spectroscopy. And let me just remind you that in this technique, uh, we use uh, a focused uh, electron beam uh, and we scan it over the surface of the sample. And at each point in the surface, we actually collect the spectrum of uh, the uh, scattered electrons. And as these scattered electrons interact with uh, different features on the surface, they lose energy. And so we see an energy loss spectrum, which can indicate what excitations uh, uh, the, the surface has. And this is a direct way to look on uh, plasmonic excitations. Uh, the resolution is good enough in the modern uh, electron microscopes in order to do that. And in fact, this is basically a near field uh, method to look at the uh, and map 
these plasmonic excitations. And you can see here an example of the map of a, a plasmon mode of a triangle. And you can see that the uh, strong fields at the corners of the triangle. So let's do that with our bow ties. And the interesting thing about do, using eels uh, in order to map plasmonic modes is that we can put our uh, uh, electron beam at different points uh, uh, along the, uh, the bow ties. So for example, if we put the beam here, we actually excite the bright mode because you can see it here. This is a calculation of the uh, charge distribution in the mode that we get when we put the beam here. And in fact, when we look on the spectrum uh, that we get, uh, the yield spectrum that we get uh, with the beam here, this is the spectrum. And you see here the peak at uh, below two electron volts, which actually corresponds to the position of the bright mode. And we can actually map the surface. We can look, we can move the, the laser beam, sorry, the uh, electron beam over uh, the structure and get a map of this mode at that particular uh, energy that corresponds to the bright mode. So that's that's what we get here. And we can do the same for the dark mode. In order to excite the dark mode, we put the electron beam in the center between the two particles, because in this case, we excite a charge distribution that looks like this. So this is exactly the two uh, dipoles that uh, um, uh, cancel each other. So there is no emission to the far field, but we can readily excite this mode in the near field. And this is a spectrum of the near field uh, mode uh, of this mode. And you can see the peak here, which is uh, more blue than the uh, peak of the dark of the bright mode that I showed you before. And this is the uh, two dimensional map of this particular mode. So far, so good. And this is just something that is quite similar, although less sophisticated to what we saw in the talk of Vlastimil Grapek in the morning. But now we would like to put uh, quantum dots inside. So here's uh, the first uh, um, foray into the story that we did. I'm sorry about the uh, low quality same image. We have quite a few quantum dots here, but only a few in the gap that actually interact with the cavity. And in this case, the quantum dots are uh, in resonance with the bright mode of the, uh, uh, of the bow tie. So we put our uh, electron beam here in order to excite the bright mode. And we look at the spectrum and lo and behold, we see vacuum rubby splitting in the spectrum, indicating that indeed there is coupling between the emitters and the bow tie. So that's nice. Now let's do the same with the uh, dark mode. So we take quantum dots that actually have a resonance at two electron volts so that they will be in resonance with the dark mode now. And we put our electron beam in the center. And of course, we see a splitting here too. Uh, so when we did that, we were very happy because uh, we, we showed that we could actually see the vacuum rubby splitting under conditions that cannot be actually, uh, it cannot be actually observed in the far field because this mode just simply does not emit to the far field. Okay, so we decided at that point to look, to, uh, to try to understand this phenomenon a little bit better from the computational point of view. So we teamed with our friends uh, from Brno, and in fact, uh, Michal Kvapil from Brno spent a few months in the lab uh, working with us on calculations of various experiments that we did. So Michal took upon himself to calculate the uh, coupling with the dark mode. So he put some quantum dots inside the structure and he did a calculation using the boundary element method. And uh, quite disappointingly, there was no, uh, um, no splitting in the spectrum. So uh, I told uh, Michal, perhaps the number of particles here is too small. Maybe we need more particles to couple to the dark mode. Let's put more particles. So he, just, he did just that. He put many particles now. And in fact, now, uh, uh, happily, he saw a splitting in the spectrum. And then Michal had this uh, brilliant idea to take the particles from the center out and to see what happens then. And so that's the arrangement. And you would say, well, maybe that's, it's just going to be uh, like before or without any coupling. What can we get? And in fact, we got exactly the same coupling as we got uh, when we had all the particles inside, in, like in the previous one. So that was a bit surprising. And we tried to understand that. So this means that basically all the coupling is actually from these particles, rather from the particles in the center. 
And in order to understand what's going on here, uh, we try to understand the distribution of the different components of the field, electromagnetic field within the gap. And in fact, uh, for a, an efficient coupling to the electron beam in the electron microscope, we need an out of plane component of the uh, 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 electromagnetic field. So we first calculated the uh, out of plane uh, uh, component of the field. And you can see it here. This is the calculation. And in fact, it's most uh, it's stronger, strongest in the center, and this is indeed where we get the strongest uh, effect, the strongest yields when we put the beam here in the center between the two uh, bow ties. On the other end, if we calculate the in-plane component of the field, which is the, the component that couples to the quantum dots, we get a, quite a different picture. In fact, the center is not so strong anymore, and the strongest effect is in the periphery of the uh, quantum of the bow ties. So the dark mode distribution in space is quite different in plane versus out of plane. And so this really seems to explain what we see because we have to put our particles here in the periphery of the gap in order to get strong coupling with the, uh, with the dark mode. In order to prove that, we went back to our uh, experiment and we looked for a uh, result in which we have our quantum dots um, distributed more to the periphery of the uh, bow tie. And we found such an example. You can see here that the quantum dots are in the periphery and there is a nice vacuum rubber splitting in the spectrum. So this really indicates that in this case, there is a very nice and interesting difference between the in-plane and out-of-plane component of the field. On one hand, we see that the out-of-plane component uh, is maximized in the center. And that's why the coupling to the laser beam is, uh, the electron beam is strongest here in the center. On the other hand, the coupling to the local uh, quantum dots uh, is strongest in the periphery of the uh, bow tie. So uh, to uh, wrap up this part of the talk, I showed you that we can also show coupling to a dark mode of the uh, bow tie by using electron energy loss spectroscopy. And this coupling is quite interesting because it uh, tells us something about the differences in the uh, distribution of different components of the electromagnetic field within the bow tie. Uh, and with this, I would like to wrap up the, the, the overall talk. Um, so I showed you in this talk that we can see strong coupling between quantum emitters and plasmonic cavities. I uh, showed you that we can use several different observables in order to probe this phenomenon from scattering through PL to electron energy loss spectroscopy. And there are several novel phenomena that I, I uh, indicated during the talk. Uh, there is an interplay between dark and bright modes. I didn't have time to talk about dark and bright modes of the quantum emitters themselves, but they are also affecting some of the phenomena that we see. And we are actually now trying to uh, push uh, uh, this um, uh, experiment by first improving the coupling uh, in several different ways, including uh, making the uh, plasmonic response narrower. And we have some ways to do that. And then we would like to also look at coherent interactions between particles induced by the uh, plasmonic uh, cavity and we have uh, a few uh, suggestions how we can do that and what are the uh, observables, especially in terms of non-classical emission of light that we can uh, tap into in order to see such incoherent interactions between particles. And of course, we are uh, thinking quite strongly about uh, uh, replacing our quantum dots by molecules, but this will be quite difficult because quant quantum dots have much stronger uh, um, dipole moments with uh, uh, higher stability. So with this, I would like to uh, uh, finish. I would like to thank uh, my colleagues in the lab. I already mentioned the colleagues who were involved particularly in this work. I also would like to uh, mention my uh, lab manager in Balriven and several of my colleagues uh, uh, in various other places in the world, including the Bernot people uh, who have worked with us closely in the EELS experiment, and finally, several uh, sources of uh, funding, 
and thank you very much for listening at this uh, 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 late time of the day. Thank you very much, Gilad, uh, for this uh, very nice talk. And uh, there is one comment. Actually, it's a joint comment between uh, uh, Thomas Sikola and myself. Uh, what will be happen if you put a 2D material, one monolayer or double layer, into the in 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 your bow tie? In 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 uh, could you also do um, rubby splitting or, or strong coupling effects? Yes, in this has case? actually been shown. Uh, in this case, you are not involving a single uh, emitter, a single exciton, like uh, in our case, you are involving typically a larger number of excitons. And this is an experiment that was done, I, I believe, by my former student, Timo Shegai, who is now a very successful independent uh, researcher in Chalmers University in Sweden. <laughs>